again everyone, Matt Johnson, Solutions Engineer for Hagerman & Company. Today's tech tip video I'm going to do is on key scheduling and the example I'm going to use is for doors and we'll just see how this works a little bit. I'm just going to place a wall. We just want to add three doors. We'll use doors for this exercise. I'm just going to place four doors here. We'll annotate these so that we can show the mark for the door so we can tell which door that we want to add different parameters to in the key schedule. So the first thing we'll do is add the overall door schedule. I'm going to select doors and say OK. So in this we just want to add in there the type which is going to be the dimensions of the door by size and then we'll add the normal things that you would schedule on a door like the width uh, we want to do the mark number and we'll move that up to be at the far left on our schedule the height and so now we have four doors with four different marks they're all the same size, but each one represents each individual door. And so doors have other things, properties that need to be scheduled, such as finish or the frame type. And you can put all of those um, parameters into your schedule and change those individually one by one. But sometimes they're going to have door styles in a large building that's going to be uh, needing to have certain configurations of kick plates, closers, uh, finish, uh, what type of uh, frame materials and things like that. So let's look into a key schedule to uh, propagate all those parameters into doors all at one time. So we're just going to close this door schedule, create a new one, and again our category will be doors again. But This time we're going to do schedule keys. We'll just leave the name Door Style Schedule and the key name will be Door Style. So as we start to go in here and add our key parameters, it's got the key name already in there as a field. We'll just add these, frame material, frame type, and then we'll create some of our own. So a couple parameters may be um, what lock set would be on the door. So we'll just tell it lock set, and this is going to be a text parameter. And I, will, I like to group all the parameters all in one place, so we'll just do those under materials and finishes. Okay. So now we have the lock set in there. Let's do some yes no parameters, such as whether or not the door has a kick, bait, kick plate or a closer. kick plate that's going to be a yes no and again we'll group that under materials and finishes we'll do one for the closer as well being a yes no under materials and finishes so now that we have several finish frame material uh, frame type, lock set, kick plate, and closer. So we say, okay, okay. Now we notice that there are no rows of data in here. So we'll just add four types of configurations. And that's all going to be determined by this key name. So we'll just give one, two, three, and four each a different finish. Um, you can have uh, several of these. And so for the finish, I'm just going to put in there uh, what type of wood uh, that the uh, finish for the door slab will be. So the first one we can do cherry, second one oak, perhaps pine, and poplar. For the frame material, we're only going to have maybe two types 
and uh, one could be metal, the other could be wood. And so once you've populated these, you can always pull those down and choose from your previous entry. Frame type perhaps is a double with astragal. Maybe this one is a single. Double. No astragal. And perhaps we'll just choose single again. For the lock set, you could either go by manufacturer or you could simply say just an entry set. You can use manufacturer names with perhaps a, a part number or manufacturer number. or just some sort of a, a description of what kind of lock set that you would like to put to this door. And these yes, no parameters, we're just going to put, if yes, we're going to put a check in the box. We'll use every other one and for a closer. And so now that we're done with our key schedule, we can add these in to our regular door schedule. So let's go back to the door schedule and add these in. So under our fields, we'll now have door style. And then we'll look for all the parameters that we added in to our key schedule, such as closer, finish, frame material, frame type, kick plate, and lock set. So now what we will do is take our door style, which is our key to assign to each door, and we'll move that down, and we will hide that later. So now that we have these in here, we can go through our doors and pick the configuration for each individual door instance. So the door style is noted as none, so I'll just assign each one of these a different key. And as you notice, as I give them the key, the parameters automatically get populated. And so you could see how this will save a lot of time when instead of adding these individual parameter values to each door. This can all be done one time using a key schedule, greatly reducing time. And so this door style, we'll close this, and we will add a sheet, and we're going to put this door schedule on the sheet. So of course, we really like having all of these parameters that we've created in there, although we don't really need to see door style on our schedule. So let's open the schedule back up. We're going to take this off, but it will be left in by formatting that one. Door style, we'll call that a hidden field. That disappears, it's still in there. Now we only have the parameters that we want. So thanks for watching everyone and good luck with your projects and next time we will get more in depth with key scheduling. Thanks. See you again.